Well, this is something I haven't done for a while. That's by a model steam engine off of eBay. It's been quite a long time, actually. But I saw this one, and it intrigued me. I was quite interested in it, and nobody else seemed to be interested in it. I think it was only myself and one other person that actually bid on this. So the seller wasn't asking a lot of money for it. Um, and so I was lucky enough to win it. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely little engine. Now, it's quite interesting, the fact that it has the horizontal uh, across the back of the cylinder type of piston valve, which is there's the valve there. When I take that, you can see it, a little bell crank moving the valve backwards and forwards. Normally, piston valves are along the side of the cylinder, but I have seen them like this before. Uh, this has obviously been scratch built by the looks of it, and I have a feeling that <clears throat> the person who built this was quite into... Um, collecting old shell casings and I'll explain why in a minute. So this is the end cap on the boiler, one of them, and as you can see it does rather look like the end cap of a shell and certainly if you look carefully we've got PDP which I believe is, um, sorry if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but I believe that stands for Pinch Art Denny Paris which was a manufacturer of artillery shells during the First World War. Then there is um, a number here, which I'm not sure what that signifies, but that 917 almost certainly stands for the ninth month in 1917, which was when it was manufactured. And then over here we've got 37-85, which is the uh, prefix for 37 millimeter shell. And the 85 was the first year that these were manufactured by PDP, which was 1885. The end cap that's on the other end of the boiler, I'll, I'll swing it around, you can have a look. The end cap on the other end is a little bit more scratched up, so it's more difficult to see the markings, but it definitely, it's definitely got PDP, and also it's got the uh, 3785, and I think this is 11... Um, not sure, 1118 on that one, so... So yeah, interesting. That for that alone, it's quite interesting. Now the construction is pretty much all brass, apart from the flywheel and the copper boiler. Everything else on it appears to be brass. It's only missing one little tiny screw, which is a two mil screw. These seem to be metric. These screws, and I don't have any, which is that support for the boiler there. But I'm not too worried about that. We can certainly run that without without any worries on uh, on that front. But. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely little engine. I have tried it on air and it runs absolutely fine. It runs down to about eight PSI. It has a little integral burner, which we'll close in and have a look at that. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there's the wick tube and the burner itself, the little tank is under there and it's held in with a plate. I'll tip it up so that you can you can have a look and you can, you can actually remove the, uh, the burner itself. So there you go. You simply swivel this plate out the way bring that up and then the burner is free to pop out it's quite interesting there appears to be a hole that's obviously a vent hole in the top plate but there isn't a matching hole that I can see I'm sure you can as well in the top of the uh, in the top of the little uh, burner so ideally that's going to need a vent hole otherwise it's not I don't think it's really going to work it doesn't look like the wicks had any any use at all so I will have a look at that take it apart but uh, no nice little engine so I guess that all that's left is to actually see if we can get this thing steaming right now I did drill a small vent hole in the burner so hopefully that all seems to be working fine at the moment I also measured the capacity of the boiler, which is about 80 millilitres. I've put about 40 millilitres in, maybe 50. So it's just over half full, which should be okay. You may also have noticed that there is no safety valve. So we've got to be a bit careful because um, <laughs> there is no safety valve. I would imagine it will blow past the piston valve, actually, um, uh, if, it, if it overpressures. But I, 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 yeah, so I've oiled it up and, uh, and, and hopefully we're, we're, we're going to be good to go. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I put warm water in the boiler, so we do seem to have a little bit of a weepy leak. I'm not quite sure where that's coming from, but uh... 
as I said, when I when I first tried this on air, it required very little pressure and it, it ran fine. So we'll just leave it and let it build up some pressure, hopefully, and we'll see if it will run. Well, unfortunately, the attempt to steam this little engine had to be aborted due to a not insignificant leak from the boiler at this end. So I've basically I've taken the screws out and we're going to take it off and um, I'll show you. Uh, what's what with the boiler and I was quite surprised I had made the assumption that this was a piece of copper tube mainly because it's 42 mils in diameter which is a standard copper tube size uh, so that's what I thought it was but we'll, uh, we'll take these off and then rotate the boiler around and there you go I'll close in on that. Hopefully you can you can see that okay. Yeah, what we have here, what we, it would appear to be, is that this is a piece of copper plate that's been rolled into a cylinder and there is a central seam which runs all the way down the middle here. Now I've cleaned it up with a file because it was quite quite messy but Obviously, this is not ideal. Now, if this was a fluid boiler, it would, the external seam wouldn't matter at all. But because you've got flame bearing directly onto this seam, and this is soft solder, not silver solder, or plumber's solder, shall we say, um, that's not going to be a good idea. So I had a thought about it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the boiler apart, take the end caps off, take it apart completely and replace this part, the copper part of the boiler with a bit of copper tube that won't have a seam in it. I think that's the best option. Obviously still use the end caps and the top fittings, these, but yeah, we'll take those out and uh, replace this piece with a bit of uh, 42 mil copper tube. So uh, hopefully we will have a non-leaking boiler after that. Well, <coughs> With a judicious use of the gas torch, the original boiler from the small little steam engine is now in its component parts. And it's, as you can see, it is actually a rolled piece of copper sheet. Still got to remove that nut that's on the inside there. But yes, and the, there's the seam at the bottom there. These are the caps, which are off of some World War I artillery shells. And uh, here's my new bit of copper tube, which I'm going to make the replacement boiler out of. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I should hopefully be able to put these in the lathe and clean clean them up, get most of that um, old solder off. Uh, same with this one. And then we'll uh, it's a matter of drilling a couple of holes in the in the top of this uh, to fit the uh, uh, steam fittings and. Uh, putting those back on and we should be good to go.